Recently, I found myself in need of a new workstation here in my studio. It needed to be VR capable and also handle some light video editing work. While shopping for used parts on eBay, I stumbled across some Chinese X79 motherboards. Never heard of them before, never seen any information on them. Got on to various YouTube channels and internet forums trying to find more information, not a single thing in English. The only thing I was met with was, well, you'd be an absolute idiot for even trying. Well, we're going to find out together how much of an idiot I actually am. My original plan for this review was actually just to build the system, do some benchmarks, and tell you whether it worked or not. But this is literally the box it came in. I popped the tape on it. This is what I saw. I figured we'd unbox it together. One piece of packing foam, two pieces of packing foam. We've got a driver disc, that's awesome. Intel X79 user manual. I doubt Intel had anything to do with this. Something else in the box. Ooh, we got an I.O. plate. We got an I.O. shield and one SATA cable. Ooh, it's right angle. We'll not use that. All right, I'm assuming in this mess of bubble wrap is our actual motherboard. I am not encouraged by the packing job or the fact that there's a whole bunch of styrofoam just kind of loose on top of this. Well, it's in an anti-static bag. That's a good sign, I guess. All right, what do we have here? It is indeed an X79 board. Uh, first thing I notice is they didn't even bother including a battery. Let's just go over the specs here. Uh, it's got four DIMM slots, uh, DDR3, and according to the manufacturer, it does support ECC memory, which should be uh, interesting to find out. Uh, it's got two PCIe 1X slots and a single PCIe X16 slot. I'm not sure if those are Generation 2 or Generation 3. We'll have to find out once we get everything installed. It's got a USB 3.0 header on board, as well as one, two, two, piece, two USB 2.0s, a front panel audio, a front panel serial, uh, and then your normal front, front panel I.O. Uh, only four SATA ports on this board. It's got one six gigabit port and three three gigabit ports. Uh, we're also kind of lacking on fans as there's only one four pin fan and one three pin fan header. Uh, we'll have to see. The other glaring omission that I see, I don't know if you guys can pick up on that, there's no heat sink on the VRM. But what do you say we do a system build and we'll find out if this thing actually works. Inside of my build, I've got a mishmash of new and used components. Uh, starting with the X79 Chinese motherboard. Again, I don't even know the manufacturer of it. We've got an Intel E5-2667 6 core 2.9 gigahertz server processor. Uh, 32 gigs of Samsung DDR3 ECC, I believe running at 1333. Uh, we're gonna throw in a GTX 1070 Founders Edition. We're putting in a 60 gigabyte SSD from Otherworld Computing, as well as a one terabyte Western Digital Black spinning drive. Sticking with the eBay Chinese theme, our cooling is all Chinese, starting with the Scythe Big Shurkin N2B 120 mil CPU cooler, uh, as well as some Asian Horse 120 millimeter LED fans.
All right, the build is pretty much done here. Uh, I really have no complaints about the board, um, except for one small complaint. If you can see, right up there on top of the dim slot is one of the screws. And in this case, which is a Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, I really couldn't get to that screw with a standard size screwdriver. I ended up using a little bit driver with a Phillips bit on the end of it to torque it down. Um, other than that, it was pretty smooth as far as the, uh, the motherboard goes. So props, unknown Chinese manufacturer. Um, one bit of difficulty I did run into was with this scythe cooler. Uh, I'm missing a bag of parts. I got the retention arms on it. What I didn't get was the screws to attach the cooler to the retention arms. Um, so I had to abandon this cooler and go with a, you know what it is, it's a Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212. Um, I did put one of the, uh, the LED ring fans from Asia Horse on there. So we'll see how that does with there. There's four of those in there. Um, not quite done with cable management yet, um, but uh, overall, pretty happy with it. Let's see what happens when we fire it up. So welcome back. Overall, that build went pretty well. Uh, moment of truth time. I've got it set up on my desk here. All right, we got a post. And we are in the BIOS. Uh, so there we go, 32 gigs of RAM. And would you look at that? We're in Windows. Our six core CPU is turboing itself all the way up to 3.4 and is idling at 41 degrees Celsius. And there we go. Uh, we've got superposition started. Uh, we're seeing about, right now it's sitting at 87 frames per second. Uh, the opening scene was at 128. Uh, we're running the benchmark. We'll see where it lands. For those interested, my GTX 1070 is sitting at 1835 megahertz. That's just stock. There's no overclock on that at all. And the 1070 right now is sitting at 68 degrees Celsius, 98% utilization. So no throttling or bottlenecking based on the CPU performance. So, to answer everyone's question, yes, this actually does work. Uh, Chinese motherboard I picked up for $117, a processor for $55, 6 core, 2.9 gigahertz, turboing to 3.5, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, a couple miscellaneous used parts, a Thermaltake power supply, a cooler that didn't come with all the parts, so we swapped it out for a Hyper 212 Evo, uh, a Cooler Master case, uh, what else do you want to know? Uh, I think overall the build looks fantastic. It works pretty well. We'll be doing some benchmarking on it. This will actually be my workstation here at my studio for probably the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm pretty happy overall with the results. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you all for joining me. See you in the next one.